translated into French. I'll be speaking in English, pardon my poor French. Uh, um, so we'll be talking about electromagnetic field exposures and that they actually act by activation of what are called L-type voltage-gated calcium channels. And this then leads to quite a number of different diseases, including electromagnetic type of sensitivity. And we'll talk about that in a second. OK, so most of my talks will focus on how uh, microwaves and other EMFs, electromagnetic fields, work on the cells of our bodies and how uh, those exposures then cause uh, electromagnetic hypersensitivity. I will also briefly discuss how a whole group of um, emerging illnesses, including uh, CFS, uh, fibromyalgia, multiple chemical sensitivity, are uh, produced by, uh, a, by a common mechanism, which we call the Nohono cycle. Um, so how can electromagnetic fields, EMFs, impact our biology and medicine? Uh, this has been a great puzzle uh, because the EMFs that we're talking about are composed of very low energy photons. That is, the individual photons that make them up have, do not have enough energy to impact the chemistry of our bodies. And so the question is, how can they influence our biology? And the U.S. and international safety standards are based on the assumption that they cannot do this, that only thermal effects, only heating, need to be considered, such that exposures, uh, exposures that produce only tiny uh, heating uh, cannot have biological effects. We know that that's false, and part of the reason we know that it's false is because there are literally thousands of papers in the scientific literature that report biological eff effects at exposures well within safety standards, and though none of those things should occur if the safety standards were, were accurate. Um, there's a second type of evidence that's important here as well. Uh, it's been known for uh, well over 30 years that pulsed electromagnetic fields are much more, in most cases, are much more biologically active than our non-pulsed fields. And, um, and that's despite the fact that they produce the same heating or even less heating in, in some experiments. So, uh, again, we know that heating is not the explanation, and in fact cannot possibly be the explanation. So, I've recently solved this important puzzle, not from my own experimental work, but from information that was available in the scientific literature. And that is that, uh, that EMFs work by activating what are called voltage-gated calcium channels. And it's the down, what, what, what we call the downstream effects of the increased intracellular calcium that leads to the biological effects of EMF exposure. So I want to I want to kind of explain to you how this whole system works. Okay, these voltage-gated calcium channels are channels in the plasma mem plasma <coughs> membrane of cells, the membrane that surrounds the cells. And so when these channels are activated, they open up and they allow calcium to flow into the cell. And it's the excess calcium in the cell which is responsible for most, if not all, of the biological responses. Okay, so this has absolutely nothing to do with eating. So what's true is that this mechanism is, uh, uh, occurs in response both to microwave exposures and also uh, lower frequency, uh, still lower frequency EMFs. And, uh, and so this is shown, I think, on the next slide, and, and there's a, a big table here. And so, oops, none of it is showing? Oh, great. <laughs> We're in big trouble. Okay, um, well, okay, there's a table here which you cannot see, I apologize, <laughs> in which uh, EMFs of various sorts, um, the effects of them, all of the effects of them, can be blocked by what are called calcium channel blockers. Okay? Calcium channel blockers are drugs that block voltage-gated calcium channels. And what that then tells you is that the EMFs... Um, the conclusion is that uh, the EMFs work biologically by activating these voltage-gated calcium channels. And in... in uh, in English, they're, they're abbreviated uh, VGCCs, I guess in France it's CCVD. 
And, uh, and, so, and, and this is further supported in the case of microwaves by hundreds of studies which have shown that following microwave exposures you get big increases in calcium fluxes and also changes in calcium signaling. Okay? And so these can all be explained through the activation of these VGCCs. Okay. Now, in addition to that, uh, Panagopoulos and his colleagues in Greece uh, published uh, two studies in uh, 2000 and 2002 in which they predicted that the voltage-gated ion channels, and, and there are a number of those in addition to the VGCCs, but at this point we're only seeing effects through the VGCCs, that these could be affected by, uh, by low, uh, low intensity uh, fields, okay? In other words, that these very modest fields that produce essentially no heating could act to activate these channels. And of course, basically what my work showed is, is that uh, this is true for the VGCCs, okay? So we have both empirical evidence and a theoretical background for this conclusion. Okay. So the finding that the EMF exposures act uh, via activation of the VGCCs provides for the first time an answer to this puzzle. How can exposure to EMFs uh, composed of low energy photons at low intensity fields uh, produce, uh, uh, produce changes? And all those changes then are produced through the increase in intracellular calcium and by what we call downstream effects. Now, one of the important downstream effects is an increase in nitric oxide. Okay? And this was shown um, by an experimental study by uh, Arthur A. Pilla uh, in, this, uh, in this, uh, this, uh, this publication, which is listed on the bottom here. And he showed that you could take cells in culture and expose them to pulsed microwave frequency EMF. And you get an almost instantaneous increase in nitric oxide, which is dependent on the calcium increase. Okay, It's dependent on an increase in calcium. Uh, okay, so there are two of the nitric oxide synthases, which are calcium dependent enzyme, enzymes. And so those are what are responding here, okay? And so he showed this, this, this occurs almost instantaneously in response to low intensity uh, pulse field microwaves, okay? And uh, so most of the physiological responses to uh, calcium and nitric oxide act. Uh, in uh, by uh, so the physiological responses to nitric oxide act via increases in cyclic GMP CGMP, leading to stimulation of the CGMP dependent protein kinase. Um, in contrast to that, most pathophysiological effects, most damaging effects, occur through uh, through nitric oxide acting as a precursor of proxy nitrite leading to free radical generation and oxidative stress. And the way in which we think this, uh, this goes on, then, is shown on the next slide. And, oh, that one shows. Good. Wonderful. Okay. And uh, so let me just use my pointer here, okay? So here we have microwaves and other low-frequency EMFs activating the VGCCs, leading to increases in intracellular calcium here. And, 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 and nitric oxide, okay? Uh, and uh, nitric oxide can act through CGMP and the G kinase to produce therapeutic responses, okay? Now, there are therapeutic responses that occur in response to these microwave fields, okay? And they've been studied for over 40 years now. And so all the effects are not necessarily bad when they're done under very precise conditions. Um, and uh, Arthur Pilla argued that this is the mechanism for therapy, and I also made the same, a very similar argument in my paper on this. Okay, so actually more than one paper on this. Okay, now, um, but nitric oxide can react with this, with superoxide to form proxy nitrite which can break down to form free radicals in oxidative and nitrosative stress. Now, um, and what I've argued is that all, all, all three of these can have roles in the pathophysiology, so in, in terms of causing diseases, but in addition that excess 
calcium signaling can work also to produce pathophysiology. And uh, hopefully, if I have some time, I'll show you some examples of that. Okay, next slide, please. So this is, this is the paper that Pella published, basically arguing for that mechanism. Next slide. And uh, so what we have here is uh, uh, electromagnet. Okay, so, so here's some papers that are important that, uh, that I've published. Uh, this is the key paper, the first paper that I've published on, on the EMF uh, things that we've already discussed. Um, this article was uh, honored to be included in the Global Medical Discovery site as uh, one of the most important medical articles of 2013. So that's obviously an important honor. And uh, I've got two other papers that were published uh, this year and just submitted a fourth paper. Uh, and uh, the other paper that I'm going to be talking about is my 2009 uh, Multiple Chemical Sensitivity Review. Next slide, please. Basically, what I have is a table here which lists a whole series of responses to uh, microwave exposures that have been repeatedly reported in the literature. And all of these can be explained by these downstream effects to the VGCC activation, okay? So all of these can be explained through the mechanism that I showed you in that, in that, uh, that slide that had the, uh, uh, the nitric oxide, proxy nitrite, uh, and calcium signaling effects. So those include, one, oxidative stress, single strand and double strand breaks in DNA, cancer, okay? Cancer can be caused through this mechanism, okay? Uh, breakdown of blood-brain barrier, that's already been discussed here, I think. Uh, male and female infertility. Um, I'm sorry? Therapeutic effects. Uh, depression. And diverse neuropsychiatric symptoms. Uh, melatonin depletion, that's been discussed, of course. Cataract formation, let me just say, people have been claiming cataract formation is caused by heating. That's false, okay? We know that cataract formation can be produced and by VGCC activation and that, that uh, increased intracellular calcium has a critical role in that process. And uh, there are also cardiac changes. Tachycardia, arrhythmia, sudden cardiac death. <coughs> We're having an, an epidemic, unexplained epidemic of those in our populations. I think that it's caused by, uh, by, uh, by, by EMF exposures. Okay, next slide. And I think, uh, oh, this one shows. Well, okay, I've already talked to you about these. Okay, now, um, so, okay, so basically what, what, uh, what that, what we're talking about here is how these mechanisms can lead to all of those pathophysiolo pathophysiological effects, but also to the therapeutic effects. Next slide. Okay. Let me just say, those are not the only things that I think, that are not the only pathophysiological effects of EMFs. I think there are probably a whole series of others, but those are some of the ones that are best documented. Next slide, please. Um, now, let's talk about EHS. Um, so, um, electromagnetic hypersensitivity, of course, is a major focus of this meeting. And um, so, and, and I think the, the best understanding of the mechanism of electromagnetic hypersensitivity can be obtained by looking at the parallels between EHS and MCS. And so, uh, so what are those parallels? Well, first of all, cases of each of them can be initiated by previous exposures, mainly chemicals in the case of MCS and mainly EMFs in the case of EHS. Um, they're often comorbid, that is, they often occur in the same individuals. They both involve symptoms coming from the brain but also from peripheral tissues, okay? So there are a number of different tissues that can be involved in producing sensitivity responses. 
But in both, the variation in symptoms from one individual to another it can be quite large. So you can see a lot of variation in symptoms and also a lot of variations in severity. That's already, that's been discussed here, of course, as well. And so that argues for a primarily local mechanism with variable tissue distribution. And that's what we call the no no cycle. Two minutes? Okay. Merci. Okay, so basically uh, what is true is that uh, the chemicals acting via MCS act through excessive activity of the NMDA receptors. And the uh, electromagnetic fields, as I've already talked about, next slide please, um, of these channels, okay, and to produce sensitivity, okay. So, uh, next slide please, um, next slide please, next slide, diopositive, ah, merci. Okay, so um, this is the no-no cycle. We don't really have time to talk about it, but I just want to show you that the, the VGCCs have a similar role in the cycle to uh, the NMDA receptors. So again, these are targeted, the NMDA receptors are targeted by chemicals, the VGCCs by EMFs. And next slide, please. And